All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Den with Brown Bear. I'm Miguel, and I've got two very special guests that I'm super excited about, like super excited. Met these guys on Instagram, and uh, I, I can't express how excited I am. I could just, I could show you my goosebumps that I've got. Uh, this is super cool. But I've got DeBrandon from Utopia Golf, and uh, I'm actually wearing their shirt, uh, which is super sick. I bought one of their prints as well, and I'm wearing their bracelet. And I've got David from Steez Golf, and we're going to ask them a couple of questions and find out a little bit about what it's like starting a new company in fashion, in apparel, in the golf industry, in a time of what I call tumultuous change. So uh, let's go into our interview process in just a moment. Here's the question that we're going to be talking about today. Are dress codes and the less formal judgments of others going to keep the game of golf from growing a new fan base of the glorious game of golf? Let's hope not. Recently, Terrell Hatton, who's an Englishman, won a tournament on English soil, a tournament, no less, that inspired a young Terrell to pick up the game when he was just a kid. These types of stories happen in movies, but this is reality, so it had to be crapped on by some haters. Why did they try to ruin this man's homecoming? Because he wore an effing hoodie. Are you kidding me? A garment that is not only stylish and indicative of his youth, he's 29, but wholly practical and internationally a style icon got this guy heaps of controversy. Let's be honest, the legends of the game, Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson, they're from a bygone era. In fact, Mickelson is playing on the senior tour. Wait, I'm sorry, the champions tour. I meant no disrespect. Tiger's chasing his 83rd win and a few more majors, but in my opinion, I fear he's on borrowed time. The reality is that you have a wonderful and compelling core of amazing talent, not only entering the tours around the world, but flat out dominating it. Youth. It's unavoidable. Evolution. It's real despite the controversy of church and science, and it's happening right before our eyes. Sure, change is difficult for some. While some elders may say, don't tread on me, I respond back and get the hell out of the golfing way. So, I'm going to ask this question, and it's to both of you. What say you? As the owners of your respective brands, Utopia Golf and Steve Golf Apparel, what are your thoughts on fashion and style as a potential and major influence of whether or not this game grows in the 21st century? Uh, DeBrandon, we'll start with you. Thanks for having me, Mr. Miguel. And I'm excited to be in the den. As you can see, I'm, I'm down in the basement in the den. I love that uh, wood background. <laughs> in the den here in Baltimore. Um, yeah, that's that's crazy to 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 see how this hoodie situation has has been such a talking point um in, in the golf world. It's, it's it's unbelievable to me um to to believe that a gentleman, like you said, Mr. Hatton, who is a child, they showed the pictures of him as a kid. Then yeah. he redid the picture after he won the tournament. And I'm thinking right. to myself this is crazy. This is crazy. But what has happened and what I do believe is that it's just those archaic dress codes and, and conceptions about about golf as it was versus golf as it is and golf as it, it shall be moving forward. I mean, it's just a hoodie is, is, is just a part of wardrobe in, in the 21st century. And, and, and what I think and what I'm what I what I know is with with the top golfs and the in the in the right. five iron golfs and the pop strokes that's popping up, golfers going forward are going to always want to come as they are. You know what I mean? If that's a hoodie, if that's a chain, if that's if that's you know sweatpants, whatever it is, golfers are going to want to come to the courses as they are. And if they're not comfortable, they're not going to come. So it's going to be one of those things where where you go where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. Sure. So, so sure. golf courses may be, be be putting themselves into a position, but there's other avenues for for golf to grow going forward. So, this you know, hoodie thing is crazy. I, I'm really glad you brought up the top golf. That's not even something I considered. We have a couple here. I live in Phoenix. We've got one in Scottsdale, and we've got one in Glendale, right by Arizona Cardinal Stadium. And uh, what you're seeing there are people having a good time, and they're comfortable but they're having a good time in their own way. As you said, they're coming as they are. So if they're getting exposed to the game of golf in that manner and in that environment where they're comfortable having a good time, it's natural for them to think when they go to a real golf course, they can do the same thing. 
Um, David, what, do you, what, what are your uh, thoughts on this? Yeah, so I'm going to just first thank you for having us on, um, you know, the, the Bear Den. Um, you know, kind of agree with, with the Brandon. Um, you know, being someone who recently graduated college, you know, we're looking for an outlet to kind of stay active and, and, and socialize with friends who we may have trouble keeping in touch with. So, you know, if we're doing social activities such as golf recreationally, you know, the pressure of, of prestigious people, you know, judging us is going to basically be a huge turnoff um, no matter where we go, right? So we want to be celebrated, as the Brandon mentioned, and also feel comfortable. Otherwise, you know, it's hard to get into the game that way. Um, imagine, you know, going to a basketball court with people running fives and they're like, no, you're terrible at the game. You're not dressed correctly. You can't, you can't play, you know? So you just go find a different a gym. And I feel like the same thing is, is um, directly correlated with golf. Um, the hoodie thing, kind of a shame. Um, I feel like most of it's coming from the purist and, and the traditionalist who, who are strictly against uh, change. Um, you know, I feel like you can kind of have both. You can accept some change, but maintain some of the old ways of doing things. So, you know, as, as long as the golfers, they learn proper etiquette and respect for the golf course, as well as the right. members of the course, then I feel like it doesn't really matter what they wear, as long as they feel comfortable and, and accepted where they are. Right. Um, you know, having, having the judgment and, and conflicts and, you know, people giving you death stares in the clubhouse, you know, in the back of your mind while you're stepping up to the tee, Exactly. Yeah. You're, you just feel like a presence breathing down your neck and you know, you can't play good golf that way. So right. I feel all in all, um, you know, for, for the growth of the sport, inclusion is necessary and, you know, just stopping all the judgment and, 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 you know, promoting more acceptance and inclusion is, is highly necessary. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, you bring up a point that I'd like to touch on, which is, you kind of said a little bit older, more traditional purists. The reality about the game of golf is that it is a game for life. So mm -hmm. you do, un I don't want to say unfortunately, shoot, I almost slipped there. <laughs> you do have a lot of older people still at the course playing the game. Now, you and I go to the gym, the YMCA, we go play a little street ball. We aren't going to see anybody 60, 70, or even 80 hanging out around the court judging us. But one of the beautiful parts of the game of golf is that it is a game for life. I'm 44 years old. I used to play basketball. I really can't anymore, but I can play golf. So I think that is part of what is perhaps preventing the evolution or transformation of the game of golf. You still have the old guard around, and they still have the keys to the kingdom. Um, I don't know how much longer that's going to last, but uh, we'll see, I suppose. All right, um, I want to ask guys a couple of questions that are a little bit more pertinent to you specifically. Um, where did the names come from, and why golf apparel? Why not just get into fashion as a whole? Why did we meld fashion and golf, and um, where did the name come from? Um, David, go ahead and start this one off. The young guy. Let's let him talk. No judgment here, okay? No judgment. Oh, yeah. All right, good, because I would find a different podcast. Uh, <laughs> you know what? There, you could look and, and spit and hit 64 other podcasts. So, so right, thank so, you for reaching uh, out. Um, no, so, yeah, so the name Steez came from kind of like, as I mentioned before, the whole, the whole surf and skate culture. Um, it came from actually a show. Um, that stemmed from California called The Real Bros of Simi Valley. It's like a satirical show about like just the whole like bro culture. Okay. Um, so, you know, they're big skaters and they always like talk about steez and all that. Um, it's slang yeah, for... Dude, I, I had to look it up. I yeah. didn't know what it meant. <laughs> right, right. And it's like people like know like through the connotation, but, you know, they, ne they don't know the true meaning of like the slang term. So it, it kind of means like style plus style comes easy. Okay. Um, so you just combine the two words and that brings you steeds, right? So gotcha. I kind of wanted to, you know, include the, the whole style aspect of from history and, and what could be in the present and present and future, uh, merge that with like the feeling of, of steeds. Um, so I, you know, came up in the, I'm on my fourth year of golf and, you know, kind of, I'm doing decent for myself. Wouldn't say I'm the best golfer, obviously wouldn't say I'm the worst. So kind of in the middle there, but, um, 
you know, even if I duff one and then come back and, and like, you know, hit one down the middle and flush it, one of my buddies would scream out Steez. So, you know, the, the whole name. Is <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so the whole name stuck and I looked it up one day on Instagram and it was available. So then I looked it up online. It was available. So, you know, had to had to act fast on it and just didn't right. waste any time on it. So that's how I got that name. But awesome. so far, so good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I like it. Now that I looked it up and I, I see the steezy, oh, it's so steezy, bro. When, <laughs> oh, thank you, man. <laughs> when people are posting those things, I love it. I love it. Oh, yeah. All oh, right, to yeah. Brandon. So what's with the utopia? Uh, I, again, I got to be honest at first. Like when I saw steez, I was like, what the hell is that? I don't know what that means. <laughs> when I saw the spelling, the, the phonetic spelling, I was like, am I saying this right? So... How do we get with that? Yeah, no, no, we, we've been around, we started it back in the 90s. So what we were doing, this is pre, pre first tape. So what we were doing sure. was, was going to different rec centers and, and providing um, lessons and, and introducing kids who, like you say, can't shoot the jump or weren't interested in football to say, hey, we got something else here that, that you guys can, and ladies can participate in. And we kind of started just doing some shirts for the kids to identify who they were. Um, and, and we used the, the regular spelling of Utopia at that point. Um, and then the kids were asking, okay, what does Utopia mean? And so we, put, we printed the shirt that actually had the definition of, the, of Utopia with the phonetic spelling that said, you know, it's the in an ideally perfect place in the social, moral, and political um, aspects. And then all of the kids kept saying, oh, we like the, the, the phonetic spelling in order word okay. utopia you need to use that if you so so my business partner and I um at that point we were not committed to the the regular spelling of utopia because we were in, we were going to be starting a um, um a men's spa back in the 90s if you can imagine now it's starting to take off but in the 90s we couldn't get funding and people were saying a men's spa no it's experience utopia we want everybody to come and experience utopia in the men's spa um, so it evolved. It right. evolved from, hey, forget the men's spa. Let's go ahead and focus on, on, on what we're doing with the kids, what we're doing in this golf lane, um, and, and, and hunker down and say, okay, let's lock in, in the phonetic spelling of Utopia. There's so many urban golf clothing lines back in the late 90s, early 2000s, but none of them were focused on, on the golf industry or the golfers that were transitioning. Because like you said, now... 20 years ago, we were 20. Now we're 44, 47. Right. Still hip hop, still urban. But now, now everybody's saying, oh, that's what you were doing 20 right. years ago. Right. Golf thing. I, mean, I, I can't hoop anymore. My knees are aching. Yeah. Um, so now I'm getting all of those, those, those callbacks. Right. That we, that we've been getting early on um, in, in the process. So, so you took your golf started kind of pre first tee helping the kids, introducing them to the game. And right. then we said, hey, let's lock in and, and, and just focus on the business plan of, of, of dealing with, with golf. With golf. Right. And we always say, hey, we can make better products than, than, than what they're putting out. So, and then Tiger with the big shirts. And, and I'm like, nah, 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 nah. Let's, let's, let's focus on that European look of a more tailored gentleman. Because, again, we're thinking, of, we're thinking of experience utopia to spa. What we... We take we, we look more at refined, a little more sophisticated. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. So we stayed yeah. in that lane for all these years. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I like that you bring up that you started this before the first tee because you know I, I think that everybody thought that the Tiger effect was going to bring the game to everyone, and it just didn't. And there's a reason why. I was working at a golf course when all that transpired, and in Northern Virginia, they started to build courses everywhere. Because there was this idea that more and more people, the youth, the common man, and the minority would start playing golf because of Tiger Woods. The problem was, and they wanted to, they really did. The problem was, is all these courses they were building were going to be high dollar ticket golf courses. So Bingo. just as people started to buy the fashion and buy beginner sets and kind of embrace the lifestyle, they were getting the Heisman Trophy. You know what I mean? <laughs> they showed up to the yeah, course. No, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the Brandon, as you started your own company, you kind of talked a little bit about that there. But what was the goal? Were you trying to make money? 
Were you trying to make a mark, perhaps gain some legacy? Were you trying to grow the game? Or honestly, were you just trying to keep yourself from being bored? <laughs> bored not. Bored <laughs> not. Um, so that, that definitely wasn't the case. But we wanted to, our goal has always been to provide timeless, affordable, and luxury experiences in the golf world, whether that's through, through putting on events or through the apparel. So that's always been the focus is we can give you high quality, high end apparel at a better price point. Because like you said, okay, once you get interested and you say, okay, I'm, I'm leaving the range. Now I want to go play. And you go and you say, okay, now this is, this is a hundred dollars or $400 or whatever it is. And you say, Oh, that could be a deterrent. So we wanted to be that bridge 20 years ago and still now to right. say, Hey, you can still look great in your, in your apparel at a great price point and, and, and be fashionable on that first tee. So that, that's always been, right. been, been, been why we do what we do and to provide an example to those young individuals in the communities here in Baltimore to say, hey, um, consistency, like you said, the patience, focus, and commitment. Uh, the commitment piece is, is we're committed to you, youth of Baltimore, and now adults of Baltimore. We're committed to, to this process. So we weren't never going to join it and jump in to, to kind of make a dollar and get out. The goal has always been to, to provide something for 100 years from now to say, hey, this was a company back in 1990s who started something that's still around and, and, and still going. So no, no, just provide opportunities and, and legacy and, and all of those things for, for the young people here in, in our city and throughout the country right. to, 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 to see and, and to witness. So that's, that's always been the goal. Well, I love it. I think that's amazing. David, how about you? Now, this is going to sound, I'm going to sound like a real jerk here, but I see, you know, a young guy who's living outside one of the greatest financial cities on the entire planet. And I think this guy started this because he wants to get rich and start trading on Wall Street. Prove me wrong. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> I actually work for Wall Street, can't trade on Wall Street, <laughs> but nah. Um, so you know, I, since 2015, um, I've been volunteering for a week every year um, in the summer for this great organization. They're called PALS Programs. Um, and what they do is they pair you up with a young adult who has Down syndrome. Um, and, you know, I found out about the program because my best friend in college, his older brother, um, had Down syndrome. Um, he played hockey. He golfed as well. Actually, he took me out to the range for one of my first swings, right? So, since that moment, I kind of knew that I had to do something big and, and go big and beyond, think outside the box to, to kind of give back to this community because I feel like we're all one family under the sun, right? We right. all, mm -hmm. you know, if, if we all kind of chip in and do our part and leave this, leave this place better than it was when we got here, you know, if everyone had that same mentality, I feel like we'd be a lot closer to being a utopia or, or a better, you know, um, just community in general. So I feel like <clears throat> since I had the time, I kind of knew what, like how to, how to use social media to reach out to certain people and, and gain, you know, a following. I kind of want to use that platform so that I can promote more and more inclusion. And, you know, since I'm new to the game, I, I'm self-taught. So I went through all the struggles and all those, all those 150 rounds mm -hmm, like you had mm -hmm. the other day, you know, um, you kind of, it's all, everything's like mental and everything's mind over matter in a sense. So I feel like, you know, I don't know all the answers by any means. I'm still extremely young, but I, f I see other people new that are kind of around the same age or even, even younger, like in their, in their early teens and et cetera. Um, just kind of going through the struggles and then throwing their clubs and, right, you know, right. just being really frustrated with themselves. And I, like my least favorite thing is wasted potential in someone. Um, but my, my, my okay. most important, most important thing and most important objective is to help people see their potential in the first place, you know, try to help as many people as I can, um, you know, rest in peace, Kobe Bryant, but you know, one of his quotes resounds with me. And, and that was, um, you know, your legacy is not based on, you know, how much money you make or how much, how many people like are fans of you. It's more so on how many people you inspired. And, you know, that quote stands, stands with me true to close to my heart. And, um, you know, I'm going to do a lot to, to give back to that community and help the people that can't really help themselves. That's my main, uh, main mission here. So 
That's kind of awesome. why I started this whole thing. Thank you. That is Thank awesome. You. Guys, <laughs> again, I'm getting goosebumps. I'm a, I'm a really emotional guy, but the fact that the two guys who I've never met before today are both out there trying to do something that I have spent my life trying to do as a teacher and as an educator is, uh, it's astounding. I'm so happy that this worked out. And you, what you just said, David, reminds me of a quote from one of my favorite movies. Um, I used to study film. I used to be an actor, hence the stand-up comedy and all that stuff. But um, it, it's a recent film. It's called The Current War. And it's a story about Thomas Edison and uh, George Westinghouse. And Edison, you know, was famous. And Westinghouse wasn't. And they asked him, hey, Edison is crapping on your electricity. And he says essentially what you said. He goes, hey, look, if you want to be famous, shoot a president. But if you're more interested in something that I call legacy, then leave the world a better place than when you were there. So it's uh, great to hear that. Um, all right. So, David, <clears throat> you, you just kind of talked to me a little bit about it. But I was going to ask you about the charity that you're involved in. And thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. I mean, it really is. Yeah. And, um, and you're, you're running the show for me. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, the Brandon, two part question for you here. Um, you had some exposure as a business on the golf channel early on as a business. Did that help you at all? Um, and then I'll ask you the second part after that. Yeah. I mean, it, it was any exposure is good exposure. So, so it was, it was, it was awesome to have the opportunity through the big break. It was a program that they used to run where there were aspiring golfers. We're in the spot. We're at that point in an aspiring golf company. And we said, oh, I this makes perfect show. sense. Yeah. To, well, yeah, as I, as do I, but, but it, 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 it was a perfect match. We said, Hey, let's reach out to, and it was a minority golfer who was selected to be in season two. Um, hadn't met him personally, but we knew through, reaching out and some some things that we could could, could could touch base with him. He was an educator like you. Um, so we reached out and we said, hey, I know you're going to be joining this program. We would love to send you um, some wardrobe to, 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 to wear while you're in the program. And it worked out perfect. Unfortunately, he got it kicked off the show early. Okay. So Jay, his name was Jay McNair. He was maybe, maybe the first or second person off of the show. Um, right. But he was able to wear some of our apparel through through some of the events that they did. I think they went to Las Vegas uh, for 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 that season. So no, it worked out perfect. We were able to run commercials during the program. Back then, you could kind of you know work through through the different cable distributors and say, hey, we have a commercial we want to run at a great price point. Things weren't as expensive back right. in two thousand and four. So it worked out perfect. It was it was good at that at that moment. It was and it was important to us. And important to 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 our to our community who hadn't followed us back then, but to the community back then to see that to say, oh, okay, okay, we haven't seen a a, a minority company right right doing those things, and it was it was important. So no, or it, a minority mm -hmm. player wearing product from a minority owned company. Yeah. Right? We yeah, see tons of, of minority athletes, but who owns the companies that are putting the clothes on them, right? Right, right. Um, and, and, and critical, yes. I want to ask you this, too. How did it go with you making uniforms for high schools and college? Is that something that you're still doing? We, well, we have one of the, one of the schools here in Baltimore, one of the, the um, Catholic schools, St. Francis Academy here in Baltimore, that's huge now for football, but probably the number one in the country for football. But back then, and probably still now with their golf program, wasn't the same. It's a small high school, maybe 2,000 students, um, next to the Baltimore City Jail, no grass, just one little plot of, 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 of land. Um, so, so we kind of, through, through our program, with working with the kids, we had some kids who were at that school. I said, hey, um, uh, Mr. Jews and, and Mr. Floyd, can, can y'all do some uniforms for us? We just out here playing in T-shirts and, and not hoodies at that time, but, you know, just sweatshirts. And I said, oh, no, no, we could certainly do something for y'all. So we started doing that for them. Those couple of those players went on to go to colleges, some HBCUs, kind of that same sort of snowball effect to say, hey, I know a, a, a company that, that, that I wear that stuff here at practice who would love to talk to 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 us about maybe doing some uniforms so that was at that point a good idea right 
but we had to put a we had to put a pin in it and pivot because once you start getting into the uniforms and, and you're starting to 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 do some of those things with with everybody wanting customization that was at that time we weren't really wanting to do that with names on things and all of those things and he said now nah, really the hassle of dealing with 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 the universities became a bit a bit much sure a bit much and we said now nah, we're gonna step back on that we don't want to go right. down that rabbit hole too far we don't want to go down that rabbit hole too far but right but no at, at, the, at, the, at those two pivotal pivotal moments were important to us um to help build the brand well, I, th- I, th- I think that's a super cool way of thinking about it. You see, David, before there was social media, people actually had to, you know, <laughs> they had to go work. You know what I mean? Type of letter. Yeah. Type of letter. <laughs> they had to knock on doors and shake hands, you know? <laughs> um, which kind of brings me to my next question. Um, and, and to be honest, I'm going to ask you guys this, and, and it's up to you. Um, my Zoom is running out of time here. So. Uh-uh. If we have to, can we start a new one? Would you guys be willing to come back for another 10, 15 minutes? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Um, we, we still have about six minutes left. But so, David, let me ask you this. Um, as a small upstart company, uh, which is happening a lot in golf, direct to consumer, DTC, mm-hmm. is that something that you're going to want to stay with to keep your own identity and, and the power within your own hands? Or do you foresee making a business deal with somebody bigger what, what's going on with the DTC part of it right now um I honestly I want to just stay stay with it um you know I started this up in around June so not quite like the Brandon's 20 years over there but not, you know so <laughs> it's kind of my 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 baby in a sense I'm kind of sure. like raising it every day um actually what, what gave me the idea was um I planted a few bonsai trees and thought to myself, huh, like, if I start something and water it a little each day, eventually it'll grow into a big tree and something great, right? So, you know, I kind of took that idea and made it into a business. And I feel like I don't want to sell out to a big company or anything like that. I feel like the best way to spread the message and to, you know, really include people and and have them feel good about themselves is to reach out to them directly, you know? So I I don't want to shy away from the DTC model. um, And I don't see it happening anytime soon, so. Okay. Yep. And and to Brandon, what about you? I mean, yeah. you know, after 20 years, do you ever feel like it's been my baby, but it's 20 years old now? We got <laughs> to get out of the house. Go on. You're 20 <laughs> years old. Go on. Go make me some money. <laughs> no, nah, not at all. For 20 years, son. <laughs> it, it's, it's the complete opposite, actually, because because every, every chance we get, we try to just coddle that baby a little tighter. To okay. be honest, especially through this COVID, especially through this COVID scenario, right. um, where where now even big businesses and big big box stores, like you said, are now saying, "Oh well, let me pivot and think about doing our direct to consumer model." We got to reevaluate what we've been, what, why we're we doing it this way to to see if we can compete with the 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 Steves and the, and the Utopias of the world. Right. Um. So no, no, no. We've never. No, nah, I wouldn't say never. We've had discussions about being part of some of those 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 big golf establishments. And and our, our our nightmare and the thing that makes like I said I coddle that baby a little tighter is to walk into those establishments and you see seventy dollar polos marked down to nine dollars. Yeah. And in the value could you imagine one of our polo shirts after all that we've been through and all that we've done to just be discarded in such a way. So, so no, we try to make sure every one of our products is at a quality price point and we never do sales. We never do sales. We're, we're like Tiffany's and, and, and Bentley and those companies that say, hey, this is the product. Right. This is what we believe the value of that product is and, and, and we hope you do as well. And there's, so, there's a built-in legacy right there, right? Because you're absolutely right. You go to a big box store and, you know, if I go get a Travis Matthews or a FootJoy shirt that was originally $85 and now they're selling it for 15 what does that mean about the quality of the shirt? What does that mean about that particular style? Um, there is something about exclusivity and, and leaving a legacy. This is the value of our product and it will always be that because we believe in it. I like that a lot. 
Um, so I, I absolutely respect the hustle of both of you. And we've been talking about where you're at with ideals, principles, and ambition. But I got to ask you this, and is there a line in the sand for you? Like, is there a line in the sand that's quantifiable? Do you say, I have spent this much money and I can't anymore? Um, when do you decide to, to take the next step, whether it be forward, or I already suggested this, but you both are like, nah, this is my baby. <laughs> but I was going to ask, you know, when do you, when do you ask yourself, is it time to take a step back? You guys have already addressed that. But is there a line that's quantifiable? Do you say after so many years, this number of years or this number of dollars? Go ahead, David. I know you're just new to this, so. Yep. Um, don't, you know, I don't have any plans of giving up soon. Um, you know, the, the people I've met, you two, um, included in like, you know, the kind of family that we've built. Um, you know, I treasure those interactions. I've even played with, you know, people who've, who visited the East Coast from California. So just the people I've met so far and I've gotten to interact with, um, you know, it's kind of keeping me going and, and, and feeling my fire a little bit. So I know motivation might die out, um, but, you know, my purpose keeps me going. So I don't see myself drawing any lines in the sand. I love it, dude. To Brandon. No, absolutely no lines in the sand. I mean, we, we like I said, are committed to this thing in perpetuity. I mean, we're not going to, at this point, um, even consider consider that as part of the conversation. Right. And what I will tell you is the way that we kind of stay fresh is we always want to introduce and bring in young individuals. Sure. Whether it's through mentorships, whether it's through, through, through different programs to say, hey, now that you've seen it, you see it, what do you see? What do you recommend? What are you seeing in the future um, out there in, 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 in the world? So we try to stay fresh um, and, and, and interested by always staying around those up and coming young, young aspiring golfers who keep right. us keep us fresh. So no, it's always fun, always interesting. And, and, and that's why we don't draw a, long, a line in the same, no chance. Awesome. Well, I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going to get a little bit of a refresher. You guys get yourselves a drink. I will be back in a couple of minutes. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Okay. My goodness. That was a quite a debacle. All right. So to Brandon, I want to kind of ask this question starting off with you and, and then David, I think based on to Brandon's 20 years of experience, um, he's going to give us an answer, but I kind of want to get your take on it. So here's the question. Um, okay. Is the market there? And, and that is to say, is this a golden time with the advent of Instagram and YouTube and social media? Is this the golden time for the innovator entrepreneur? Or as has been in the past, will the enormous budgets and power of the legacy golf brands stomp on the creativity, vision, and passion that you guys have? What do you guys think about that? Go ahead, Debrain. Start with that since you've got the, the experience here. Um, that that's an interesting question. Is I this mean, the time, you know, is this the yeah. new era? It's always the time. I mean, and we, and we, <laughs> we encourage all, all, all individuals that want to jump in to, it's always the time because the more you wait, you're just, you're just, you're wasting that, that, that opportunity. So it's always the time. We always kind of look at the big brains and yes, unfortunately they, they, the social media and the YouTube, and some of those things that are now available also give them extra eyes to see what everybody is doing as well. So we don't really look at them as, as, as being a threat. We kind of take it as a, as a, as a, as a, as, as being flattering to say, Hey, I know that you didn't as a, as tailor made or as foot joy come up with these urban ideas. Sure. You've seen the smaller companies, um, that are out there doing some of those more creative things, do these things, and now you want to put some, implement some of those things into to, to your model. So I think it's for us and for, for all of, of, of our boutique 
brands that are out there, the time is perfect. The time is perfect because the consumers are saying, hey, that's nice, but I want something that feels a little more warm. Right. Something that that, that, that that interaction means a little bit more. So when I do go to the course, I'm not a carbon copy of whoever else is out there or my foursome or, or how many times can you see that, that lime green polo shirt? You know what I mean? So it's one of those things where you say, okay, I want to, I want that custom ball marker. I want, right. I want shoes. Yes. I want your Nike shoes, but I'm going to take them to a custom designer to, to embellish them. So right. it's a perfect time to, to be in, 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 in the golf world. Right so, now. Just, mm-hmm. and so David, as a, as a younger guy, you know, the reality is, is that younger guys such as yourself are, you're a new generation of people who've said, hey, maybe my dad or grandpa couldn't start a company from their den, you know, but I can because I've got a laptop and I've got a cell phone. I can start a company. Do you feel or do you have other colleagues who are in on this with you? Do you feel like we've got to do it now because the iron is hot? So... You know, honestly, um, you know, I'm, I'm rolling with this solo. So um, just felt that the time was right now more than ever. Um, you know, during the whole pandemic phase, golf went up, I think it was 27% in some areas. You know, more than that, I think. More, yeah, right. definitely more than that. Because right. some states didn't close golf down like here in Arizona. So Really? Wow. Okay. They never closed down. So right. one of the things I noticed in April and – I had not seen this in a long time. There were older people, and I mean kids like my age, you know, that aren't even teenagers. They were flooding the courses in April. And I know as I just started this, people were saying, oh, you guys that I met on Instagram, they were saying, you guys get to play? And I'm like, yeah, we've been playing nonstop. So here in Phoenix, it has grown exponentially because we've been open the whole time. Right. And I I saw – no, no worries. I saw your post the other day on – you know, the, the high prices of, of golf now, you know, so kind of the demand is all there, as you can see within the prices. Like, that just says it all right there, let alone actually getting a tee time on the weekends because on the, like, you know, from, from Philadelphia up to New York, it's everything's booked out pretty much on the weekends. Right. Otherwise, you know, you got to take a chance and get a tee time at 3.30 where it gets dark at 6, right? So, you know, you see, a, I see a big influx, and I, I feel like the time is right to kind of get started now, um, you know, never, never really had the time given I worked in midtown Manhattan, um, had to commute and, and work nine, 10 hour days and then commute back home, dinner, sleep, repeat. Right. So <laughs> now that I'm, you know, now that I'm working from home, I kind of have that, that flexibility sure. of, you know, checking my phone every X amount of minutes and, um, focusing on my work though, in case my boss watches right. this, but, right. uh, Same here. you know, I'm doing seven <laughs> right. hours. Okay. Right, you know how it is. Right, right. But um, yeah, no, I, I felt like the opportunity was right. Um, you know, if if not now, then I never would have opened something. So, you know, down the road, I'll I'll figure out ways to, you know, if I when I have to go back to New York City and and work out of the office, you know, I'll find ways to to get around, you know, any hurdles and kind of continue there. But I feel like overall, with the the exponential growth, as you mentioned, of of golf you know, and everyone trying to grow the game. I feel like now is an opportune moment to kind of grow it, but also kind of comb the guys and gals into like, like help them along the way um, as they're getting into it, you know, letting them know it's not all high pressure, high intensity, you know, right. You shouldn't be playing this or that, you know, right? Like, cause those guys were so, they were so in awe that you got to play at like, you know, probably a, a really decent course, but um you know, some of the guys here, they, they just hit it around like a, a local park. They don't even get sure. to make it to the ranges and golf courses. So right. kind of just want to instill that, you know, confidence and comfortability so that, you know, when they're three, four, down, four years down the road, um, you know, they'll remember uh, Steve's Golf, you know, had that one post about not caring about what people thought and right. kind of doing your own thing and feeling good in your own skin. And, you know, I feel like that will kind of grow with the game. So. You know, what you just said right there in your own skin, um, I'll, I'll get real here for a minute. As a, a guy who grew up in Washington, D.C., the demographics there are black or white, and I am neither. Mm. Uh, so 
getting into the game of golf, I'll be honest, the color of my skin stood out, period. Mm. So guess what I didn't want to do? I didn't want to wear anything that made me stand out even more. So I sort of kind of was submissive and put on the standard golf attire because I didn't want to stand out, right? I already knew that I did. So I'm glad that you're mentioning that. And you talked about, you know, I'm lucky because I get to play expensive courses here in the summer because in the summer when it's the surface of the sun, everything's cheap, right? Mm -hmm. But I can't afford that anymore. So I went to the local muni where I play in a weekly skins and I was practicing yesterday. Um, and I met three Hispanic guys. It was the first time I ever got to play with another Miguel. And these guys, I said, how long have you been playing? Well, their first thing to me was, hey, dude, you look like you're good. We're not good. We're beginners. I'm like, calm down. I'm here to help. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, we started playing. And I said, well, how long have you been playing? He goes, five months. Well, how long have we been in the pandemic? Six months, right? So <laughs> it's exactly it like what you said. And yeah. these three Hispanic guys, if – if what's going to make them feel more comfortable at the golf course is some clothes, because maybe they aren't comfortable in their own skin, but if that clothes becomes a bit of a shelter for them and they feel more confident and secure, I'm all for that. You know, mm. um, what I don't get is this hoodie issue. And we're kind of rocking back <laughs> to that. Um, you know, I'm going to be frank here. When I heard something about a hoodie issue, I did not know it was Terrell Hatton. I, I just heard, have you heard the hoodie controversy in golf? I immediately thought it was going to be some black kid, you know, with a hoodie on at some fancy course that wasn't invited. When I found out it was a white guy who was British winning at a white course in Britain, I was like, people will bitch about anything. <laughs> like, Pretty much. Wrong yeah. with these people. Oh, sorry, I kind of went on a rant there. But, guys, I think what you guys are bringing up is it's important. And I think, as you just said, David, if, 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 the, if the catalyst is now, but the legacy is four, six, eight, 12 years down the road, and their little kids see their mom and dad playing golf, because it's not just guys, you know, um, mm -hmm. I think that's where this game grows. And I think that's where inclusiveness starts to become more pervasive in society because the bastions of, of all white upper class, those start to slowly dissolve with what we're trying to do here. You know? Mm -hmm. All right. That was, <laughs> what just happened? Um, right, yeah, we are deep there. <laughs> here's kind of my last question here. And it's for both of you because you both come from different perspectives. Um, in order to be inclusive, we kind of have to be accepting of competitors. So what advice do you have for a person who wants to start a brand or a line of apparel or a line of accessories going, what you're going through with your fabricators and manufacturers and everything, what advice do you have for someone? Um, David, we'll start with you and then we'll finish with the brand. All right, sure. Um, I, my main thing is kind of, it's kind of communicate to people that you're in it together versus competing against each other. I feel like that's really key. Like kind of like how golf is, you're competing against par. I mean, unless money's involved, but you know, um, you're competing against par versus your opponent. Like don't let their shots and, and their miss hits affect your game at all. Just kind of stay on your own path and, and, and focus on your own lane. I feel like that's, that's really key. Um, and, you know, building the right team, getting the right people in your corner. Um, by having that solid foundation, that solid, um, you know, support system, you kind of hold each other accountable and, and, and growing together and, and bringing along each other as, you know, each of you guys grow. So I feel like that's been keeping me going, keeping me turning as well as inspiring me because, you know, I wouldn't be here without the same X amount of people that I, you know, got reached out to or reached out to myself, um, you know, in the first, first months of, of starting this brand. Right. So, you know, just, just collaboration is really key um, as well as kind of deciphering and building that right team, deciphering in the sense that you kind of want to 
know who's genuine and and kind of filter out the people who just want to use you for whatever intentions they may have. Right. Um, you know, I feel like you have to play defensive offense. If that makes sense. Um, just kind of stay in your own lane, keep going, inspire as you go along, bring around, bring along the right people, and then you know, just keep um keep collaborating. I feel like that's that's a good recipe to start. Awesome. Thank you. So Brandon, how about you? What 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 words of wisdom does an elderman like you have for? The... <laughs> it's not that old. Hey, hey, I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. You got to be. Look at the wood on your wall. That is sick. It is rich. That is rich. It's no question. It's no question. It's no question. We gotta all be comfortable with age. I'm, 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 we're maturing nicely. We're maturing nicely. I think, like David said, I think, I think a lot of those principles are, are, are key. You know what I mean? And, and as you saw with the shirt that you have on, Mr. Miguel, patience, focus, and commitment have then and continue to be our principles. I mean, you gotta be committed to your process. I mean, with, and, and it's yours. I mean, you. Because like you said, you're going to get a lot of noise. And now with social media and all these other things, the noise never stops. The noise never stops. And, and you have to stay focused. You know what I mean? You got to stay on, on your journey. And, and sometimes that, that because you always hear, what's your one year, three year, five year plan? Always try to, to, to talk to some of the, the, the others and say, hey, what's your, what's your 10 year plan? Have you even thought about like, what, what would it look like for you as a, as a as a company 10 years from now like like what do you mean what would it look like and and, and kind of get that thought process to say let me let me focus on not the, just the short term but also that long term that long term and then like you said it's it's, it's the commitment i mean you, you gotta be committed to 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 what you're doing i mean we we all have to be committed and that's that's in life and in, in business and on the golf course I mean, we have to be committed to that individual shot we have to be committed to family we have to be committed to to our vendors we have to be committed to 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 that individual that reaches out on instagram and says hey i know i shouldn't probably ask you this but can i and you say you know what i'm yes i'm a we're a golf company but i'm also a connector you know what i mean i want to be able to, to use all of those years of resources and connections and, and all those things and say hey that's not something that maybe i can do but i know someone who can right and not be always assuming that everything is a threat or, or a challenge to, to your individual businesses is, is to maybe be a connector. And, 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 and those are some of the things that, that we try to do every day is to, is to live by our principles, patience, focus, and commitment, and to make sure that we're connecting and being like you, like Mr. David said, genuine, because you can tell when it's not genuine. You can, right. you can feel it. You can feel it. It's, it's not hard to, to decipher. So you say, you know what, this feels right. This feels good. Let's talk a little more. Right. And, 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 and that goes back, like you said, Mr. Miguel, to a time when, when you had to make those phone calls. You had to, to do that face-to-face -face and, and really build rapport. And, and you, don't, you don't see those things like, like we used to. So we value all those, those small details and, and, and such. So that would be my advice, is just that patience, focus, and commitment. Awesome. Gentlemen, I, I feel like I can call you that now after we've spent an hour together. I was unsure at first, but <laughs> gentlemen, thank you for your time. Um, <laughs> this has been a real pleasure, honestly. And I, I honestly hope we can find some reason to get together and meet in person at some point. I still have some friends back east. Uh, my parents don't live there anymore, but uh, I, I, I do miss it out there. And I hope I get to see you guys. Um, this has been, first of all, it's been eye-opening for me. Uh, I, I had thought that perhaps um, I was the only genuine person on the planet. Um, but now, <laughs> now I've seen that there are others out there who want to help others. Um, I kid, I kid because I love, um, <laughs> but thank you again uh, to all the viewers out there. Uh, my name is Miguel and look me up on Instagram, Brown Bear Golf. We have David from Steez Golf. And we've got DeBrandon from Utopia Golf. I'm going to put this as a text so you can see how everything's spelled properly. Please like and subscribe and hit these people up. They're doing good work here, ladies and gentlemen. Guys, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I will reach out to you guys soon. Take care. Sounds good. Thanks again for having us. Absolutely. Nice you, a pleasure. Take care, Miguel. Nice meeting you, DeBrandon. Yeah, absolutely. We'll connect.